Hello and welcome to another short video for the 12 Lead ECG I've Got The Rhythm Facebook group. In this case study, we will be looking at a type of hyperacute T wave in a patient presenting with chest pains. Credit for this case study goes to Adam Smith, so our thanks go to him for sharing. And as we can see, he was called to a male in his mid thirties presenting with chest pains that about nine hours duration that was severe and unrelenting and radiated to both arms and his back. He described the pains as needles spreading in his chest and he'd not taken any of his previously prescribed medication. Past medical history was depression, gastroesophageal reflux disease, some non-specific lower back pain and he was a smoker of about 30 a day. He was medicated for those above conditions and he had a family history of Egyptian heritage and his mother died suddenly in her late 40s. Adam recorded the patient's observation and appearance, as uh, you can see in the slide here. Um, the patient said they'd just vomited acid into their mouth. Adam said they appeared clammy and uncomfortable, and the patient had some shortness of breath while sitting on the bed. The respiratory rate was 22, saturations of 100% on air, heart rate was 72, blood pressure normal at 130 over 80, temperature was 36.1, and glucose was measured at 7.8 millimoles, and for those that use other measurements, between 4 and 8 is considered normal with this particular measurement. GCS was 15, and the patient poorly localised the pain in their chest, but reported it as severe, giving it 9 out of 10. So Adam then went on to record a 12 lead ECG, and we'll look at that now. And what can we see? Well, let's take a systematic approach. The rate is about 75, regular and sinus in origin, and the axis is normal with the computer reading that as 49 degrees. The P wave morphology looks normal, as does the QRS, but the T waves are large anteriorly. So if we look at lead V1, V2 and V3, we can see that the T waves there are actually quite large. But I'll come back to them later, obviously, as this video is about hyperacute T waves. Then if we look at the intervals and segments, the PR, QRS and QTC are all within the normal range. And we can see those um, measurements and readings from the computer uh, just up here. The other thing that we do have, though, are some ST depression and T wave inversions in the inferior leads. And if I circle those here, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's concentrate on the T waves and what are considered T wave abnormalities. But to do that, we also need to know what is considered normal. Well, normal T waves should be upright in all leads except for AVR and lead V1. And we can already see with the positive T waves here, we've got an abnormality. And they shouldn't be more than five millimeters tall in the limb leads or 15 millimeters tall in the precordial ones. Abnormalities of the T wave include being hyperacute, inverted, biphasic, or even flattened. But for the benefit of this video, we're going to be concentrating on the hyperacute ones. Hyperacute T waves are broad and asymmetrically peaked, and they can be seen in the early stages of ST elevation MI, and may often precede the appearance of ST elevation and Q wave formation. And here in V2, we can see a concaved upsloping hyperacute T wave that's asymmetrical. And we can differentiate these from a hyperkalemia type T wave because of the wide base as well. Prince metal angina is another condition in which hyperacute T waves may be seen. As already mentioned, an upright T wave in lead V1 is considered abnormal, particularly so if it's a tall T wave or a TTV1, tall T in V1. This indicates a high likelihood of coronary artery disease. And if the T wave is a new finding, a new tall T wave in V1 or NTTV1, then this is especially concerning and implies acute ischemia. Your index of suspicion should be even higher if the T wave in V1 is taller than the one in V6. And Marriott described this as a loss of T wave precordial balance. OK, so the other thing to go back to on this ECG was the ST depression and T wave inversion in the inferior leads. Now, we know that ischemia doesn't localise. So what could this finding be? Well, it is most likely to be reciprocal ST depression to the anterior leads. And we can also see that there is some ST elevation in V2 to V4, which we didn't cover earlier. And you can probably just see that where I'm highlighting now. What then was the outcome? Well, having spotted the hyperacute T wave changes, Adam sent the ECGs through to the cath lab, and after some deliberation, they accepted the patient for PPCI. 
The cardiologist found a complete LAD occlusion distal to the circumflex and severe disease in all the other vessels. The patient received a stent in the left anterior descending with a plan for urgent quadruple bypass and I will show you the angios next. In this first angio we can see that the artery is blocked. In a second angio, we can actually see the wire being inserted through the artery. And in our final angio, we can now see that the artery is open again. Just some normal variants for you to consider with tall T waves in V1, given what we've already said about this ECG. So in left bundle branch block, left ventricular hypertrophy and high voltage, particularly in young athletic people, you will often get a positive T wave in V1 and it could indeed be a tall T wave. And these are normal. There's also an exception where incorrect lead placement can lead to a, a T wave, positive T wave in V1. And that's usually where the leads have been transposed. So you need to check perhaps lead V1, V3 to make sure you've not got them the wrong way around. And finally, some take home points for you. T waves should be normally upright in all leads except AVR and V1. Hyperacute T waves are broad and asymmetrical and can be seen in the early stages of an ST elevation anyway. Tall T waves in V1 indicates a high likelihood of cardiac artery disease and a new tall T wave in V1 implies acute ischemia. And a T wave in V1 that is greater than a T wave in V6 is what Marriott described as loss of precordial T wave balance. To finish then, a well done and thanks to Adam Lomax Smith and his colleagues for spotting those hyperacute T waves and getting that patient into the PPCI. And thank you to all of you for watching. Hopefully you found this case study both interesting and helpful. Bye for now.